So what's the role of the CRO? Now, we've been talking about this quite a bit, but I thought we should take this a little deeper so you understand what that function is and what it's supposed to be able to do in some significant detail. So the CRO is clearly your sales leader, but as a CRO, does this person know how to grow your sales revenue? Now, you say they should be able to, I agree, but do they know how to do it? Do they know how to build a sales organization? I mean, this is significant. So at the top level of the CRO job, they handle the, the strategy, the strategic plan for the organization and the leadership that comes with that. So that's really, really important. Do you have, and I'm, I want you to think about this, if you have a CRO right now, or if you're doing that job yourself, these are those things that you should be able to do. And if you're can't do it or the person you have with you can't do it or is not doing it, I want you to think about what your options might be to overcome this. Well, that person should be a leader. That person should have given you a strategic plan or you should have developed one yourself for the sales organization in terms of how you're going to grow sales and very specific details about that. They've got to be able to recruit first round talent. Now, when I say that, meaning when you, people that are very good at what they do have choices, they don't have to come and work for you. They can go work for someone else. So they've got to feel like the CRO or if it's you, they want to come work for you. And sometimes I've had a, we've had a couple of engagements where the CEO had three first round draft picks, which is rare. This is down in the Florida account we had in Florida. And we had sort of teed him up for him and all three passed because they didn't like the leader. And he was devastated because he couldn't possibly process the fact that someone wouldn't like him. And I said, these people really are good at what they do and they have choices. They can work wherever they want because they're good at what they do. So you've got to be able to draft, draft first round talent as a CRO or so your CRO has to be able to do it as well. But you've also got to be able to handle the marketing piece. So the, I talked earlier on some other training about the marketing qualified contacts. And when you're buying a list or you're developing a list, you have to get the list scrubbed. You have to get the list scrubbed. You have to get the list scrubbed. Garbage in, garbage out. We got an account was telling us about how bad their no one's responded to the marketing. I said the marketing message is the problem. If the if the list is good to go and you know you've you've scrubbed it and you've got the right people at the right vertical that you want to go after and they're not opening your emails or not responding to your voicemail messages, it's because your message is off. Are you using standard art marketing? Good example. Are you doing video marketing like what I'm doing right now? There's a version of this for every vertical. Get people to listen to your video for two or three minutes. And if you've got the right message and you can identify the right pain points, they're going to reach out and talk to you. So you've got to be able to do that yourself. And it doesn't have to be anything super crazy, just something that makes sense and people can relate to. And we're doing that successful with a lot of our accounts. So we know for a fact that video works. And are you doing journeys and sequences as part of the marketing strategy? Do you have an inbound and outbound strategy? People calling you at outbound numbers and you're keeping that marketing in place. And going back to the marketing qualified contact piece, are you, can you project revenue based around that? And, and when you go back to doing that piece, and I talked about this earlier as well, if I know how many contacts you have that are targeted, I know how many leads we can drive from that because we have stats around that. I know how many proposals we can get because I have stats for that too. And I know what the closing ratios are. So I can now make revenue projections, which means that I can align that with quotas. Because if you have the wrong quotas for the marketing team, I mean for the sales team, you're going to have unrealistic expectations and the projections are always going to be off. But again, as I've said on many of our trainings, four and a half times their, of their compensation and gross profit is the minimum, minimum quota for every sales rep. But we can build on that based on how big the market is. Now, we've developed a calculator for doing this. I can punch all that stuff in and pretty quickly tell you where we stand. But I will tell you that when you hire a SMB rep, and there's some enterprise reps out there, some say, well, how many reps do I need to hire to hit a million dollars in gross profit? Well, a new rep can usually do somewhere between three to 500K in GP if all the other things are worked out. First year. Second year, they should get to five to seven to 800. So if you want to get to a million dollars, get yourself two reps. Now, again, going back to how big the marketplace is, that's another factor. So if you're in a smaller market, but again, 
you can go back and evaluate that. This is what your CRO should do for you. We only have a set number of contacts if we're limiting our range and our scope. So we have some realistic expectation of what we can project if you do that part properly. And that is a function of the CRO. So if this person isn't doing this for you or you can't do this for yourself, you need to get some help because you need a strategic plan. And by the way, that strategic plan is what's going to get that sales professional excited about coming to work for you and being a part of what your big picture is and how much business you're trying to do because they know if there's a plan to do a lot of business, they're going to make a lot of money, which is what they want to be able to do. But if you don't have a plan other than saying, I just want you to come in here and make some sales for me, that's not good enough for a first round draft pick. You've got to have something that gets them excited about being a part of something bigger than themselves. And if you can't provide that from a leadership perspective, you're not going to be able to recruit the kind of people that are going to come to your team and help you grow your business the way you want to, want to grow it. And that may be the reason why some of you are flat or stagnant. So you've, that's one reason why having a CRO take on that role for you and make that sales presentation to the reps for you and bring in the type of people that you're looking for can change your business. It really can. So if you, again, if your existing CRO is not doing this, we'd love to help you, help, you, help you try to find somebody that can. If you're doing it and doing it poorly and need some help, let us know. We'd love to sit down and chat with you as well. So again, <clears throat> again, thank you for your time today. Gary Beecham, SPC International. Thank you.